was I just sat here chatting for ages without realizing I hadn't pressed record? Yes. Hello my loves, I hope you're all doing well. It's Kirsten and I am having a dilemma. I wasn't going to start the vlog today, I was actually going to do it tomorrow after my night shift, which I've got to leave for work in a couple of hours. It's always the longest on the Sunday, 12 hour night shift. Yay! But it does mean I need to bring some reading material with me and I am having a crisis on what to choose in all honesty. So I'm going to show you the three books that I'm stuck between and then I guess you will find out with me <laughs> of what I actually pick because I don't know. Honestly this is the sort of thing where I'd be like here choose for me but I don't know and I don't actually have enough time to do like a poll on Instagram or anything so how I'm going to choose I haven't decided yet but we are either debating between being responsible and attempting to finish my June TBR and re-picking up The Bees by Eleni Paul. This is a book I started at the very beginning of June but put it down because it was so much more brutal than expected and it's very chaotic and I just wasn't gelling with it. I knew it was definitely going to be more of a structured kind of like dictatorship because that is on the back where it literally says accept, obey, serve at the back here and we're following a perspective of a bee so I really thought that there would be more lyrical beautiful descriptions of nature in this and it's really not about that at all. It is more focused on this whole almost like a dystopian type setting how you have these bees if they do not conform or if they've got slight deformities in like their wings or something they're all killed like it's very very brutal and I just I don't know if I'm ready for that like I think it sounds great but this first bit like I'm up to page 87 and these first 86 pages were just so much was happening like it was so so fast paced it did not let up and um yeah I'm just I'm not sure about the rest of it and I mean a couple of you have actually commented on my video saying that you really enjoyed this book so I am thinking about taking it with me today and seeing how much further I get and then that will decide whether I could continue with this book or if it is going to be a DNF. So that's the smart option. The other option is to start on my July TBR because it's huge. I do still have Tokyo Ghoul Volume 5 to read but I know that won't take me long so I'm definitely going to do that this week and I also have a couple of short stories to finish. Again they won't take me long so I just wanted an actual book to take with me to work for the week and start with the biggest book on that TBR which is Helen of Troy by Margaret George. This is huge, it's over 700 pages thought this would work out well because I am doing seven night shifts in a row so this you know 100 pages when I'm at work sounds like a good way to actually get through this and it would be good just to get this off July have it done and feel accomplished early in the month this is what it says really we're following Helen of Troy before she actually goes to Troy so when she gets married to then the process of her going with Paris the Trojan War and her coming back so I'm really intrigued I've mentioned that several times because it would be nice to actually see the Battle of Troy from Helen's perspective which isn't something I've actually read yet and then we just have a chaos option because I'm actually in the mood for a cozy mystery which would work for the Sherlock Holmes but because they're short stories I have three left and I just don't want to read all three in one go because I know when I do it like that I don't enjoy it as much so I am spreading it out so one per day. So instead I was having a look at my shelves and I'm actually quite surprised I don't have many cozy mysteries at all like apart from this one and then one other which is the curious incident of the dog in the night time that's it. So it's clearly something I need to just get back into and pick up a few books of, mainly because all my murder mysteries are classic. But one that I keep meaning to read is The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. This is a third book in the Truly Devious series. So this is book three of that trilogy and then there is book four which I think is the start of a new trilogy but following Stevie Still. And this one is is as I said following Stevie she goes to Ellenham Academy is an academy for really really bright children and so this academy kind of takes them out of the mainstream school environment plops them in this academy and allows them to learn in their own ways exploring their potential and Stevie goes because she wants to be basically Sherlock Holmes and in her application said that she was going to solve the mystery around this academy because in the 19 
30s, was it? In the past, the founder of this academy, his daughter, was taken. There's this whole murder mystery around it as well, and nobody has solved it. And so Stevie's like, I'm going to solve it. And that's what this is about. So the first two books are also about that murder mystery, but they also have their own smaller murder mystery that gets solved within each book and I have enjoyed all of them and I really am feeling like a cozy mystery so I don't know <laughs> but I'd really like them and I just feel like cozy mysteries are just so good especially when you are tired and you just want something that's fun and cozy and you can just snuggle up to so yeah I I'm really undecided between these three I don't know whether to be smart finish the TBR and just give this one another try or whether to be also smart in a different way but also cheat slightly by starting my July TBR early or whether just to go sod it to everything pick chaos and go with a cozy murder mystery so yeah i don't know let me know what one you think i'm gonna go for and then find out in probably a few moments what one i chose was i just sat here chatting for ages without realizing i hadn't pressed record yes it's that time of day to be honest i'm pretty tired um it's only about 12 in the afternoon so i haven't slept loads yet but I'm hungry, so I thought, let me update, let me have some food, do a bit of editing, and then I can go back to sleep, because I don't have work till half ten tonight, so I've got ages. Anyway, what I was saying to myself, apparently, which technically this is to myself, because I'm literally just talking to a camera, but you guys do watch these videos, so technically I'm talking to you guys, which makes me feel a bit better, but I was literally just talking to myself, because I hadn't even pressed record. Anyway, the book that I ended up reading yesterday. Story behind actually choosing this book was so much harder than I thought. <laughs> I thought I'd be really smart. I took a picture of the three books that I was choosing between and sent it to my sisters on this group chat that we've got. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna make them choose for me or at least have them narrow it down. Did that happen? No. One of my sisters responded and she was like, oh, okay, choose between Helen of Troy or Hand on the Wall. And I was like, okay, cool, that's been narrowed down. I'll wait till what my other sister says. Hopefully it's one of those two. Of course not. She went chaos and went, go for the bees. And so in the end, they chose all three books and was no help at all, not even to narrow it down. So that didn't work. My partner was just like, I'm not helping. Good luck. And so then I just went to my mum and I was like, what do I read next? And then she was just like, read this one. It's different. And I was like, perfect. <laughs> Great. And to be honest, it was the one that I was kind of leaning towards because as I said, I was feeling like a cozy murder mystery. And yeah, so we've started with Hand on the Wall. I am now on chapter 10, page 134, and so much has happened. It's so good. I forgot how much I actually liked these. I think what it was is I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and really fell in love with that YA murder mystery series. Thought it was fantastic. And then I picked up Truly Devious and I didn't enjoy it as much for some reason. But I don't know why, because I really like Stevie as a main character. I like how she is constantly referring back to Sherlock Holmes and Agatha Christie and just all these great classics and how this overwhelming murder mystery, like how she's trying to solve this case, how she thinks she solved it at this point, but not knowing how to go forward. Like how does she get evidence for what she believes she knows to be true and also what is happening with modern day like she thinks that she solved the cold case of what happened in the 1930s but also what's happening now with all these like mini mysteries that she's been solving in the first two books and the consequences of those how does that all tie in together and in this book she's feeling really really overwhelmed kind of interesting to see that as a character like she's got anxiety so you have a lot of anxiety representation in this and then you've just got her struggling to deal with everything because she has been through a lot in the first two books and so actually seeing that being dealt with I think is really good. I also have like just so many outlandish theories about what is going on and it's just so much fun. I also don't want to give too much away because it is the third book in a series but it is just so so good and I just yeah I, I'm really liking how it's tying back to the first book because there were parts on that first book that never fully got resolved and that's kind of what this book is doing is tying up all of those loose ends bringing it all back to the start so yeah I'm I'm really enjoying this I'm really pleased that my mom chose this one it's really easy to read as well which is great because where it was my 12 hour shift yesterday I was quite tired 
and just needed something that's a bit lighter to focus on. I think what I'm going to do today is, as I said, do some food and edit. Then I think I'm going to read a short story of Sherlock Holmes because I've only got three left. So I'd like to do, honestly, if I could get that done one per day and then also The Great God Pan, that means those two books will be finished technically by the end of June. And then also if I can do that during this week, that would be amazing. So that's what I'm hoping for. Oh my gosh, I've still got Tokyo Ghoul to go. Well, we'll, we'll fit in at some point, honestly. Right now, I just need to do something. Like, honestly, I, I made an effort to actually like get dressed, but made no effort with my hair at all. So this is just bed hair, <laughs> which is why I'm looking so like, ugh. But to be quite honest, I'm just hungry. So you know what? I think we're going to do some food and I'm really feeling like, I don't know. Let, let's go look. You know what? Come with me. Let's do some food together. feeling really good today so I'm super excited gonna keep this catch up a little bit shorter because I do want to pop out to town I've got a few things that I want to do and then of course work tonight so let's get on with it yesterday after I updated I did read a short story so I read the missing three quarter and this was just a more of a sad story so it was about a missing person and Sherlock Holmes gets called in to investigate it and it just the reason why he's missing everything that's gone on is just really sad and what's also sad is I've only got two short stories left of this collection and I just I've been enjoying it so much I think this is probably one of my more favorite short story collections that I've read and yeah I just I don't really want it to end but I have two left so I'm gonna read obviously today then tomorrow and then we will be done and then while I was at work I did read a bit more of The Hand on the Wall and the part that we're at, so it's not a spoiler because it is on the back, but Stevie and her friends are now snowed in at Ellenham Academy. They should have left with everybody else but they didn't because someone that they know convinced them not to go. The reason why they were convinced not to go was a little bit close to home at the minute because it was all about stopping this person from becoming president and it literally said about how we don't need anyone that bad as our president and it just with everything that's going on at the minute in America and the fact that so many states have now banned abortion it's just it's wrong I don't talk politics on this channel that much because obviously I want this to be a nice safe space that people can just go to but something as big as that it's just it's horrible and regardless of where you stand with abortions, there still shouldn't be anyone that should tell you what you can do with your body like that. It's it's horrible. Anyway, that's enough of that because as said, this is not a place to talk politics, but it just, when I read that bit, it did just, that made me go, oh, if only that was the way of the world. Uh, but it has started to take a bit of a darker turn and where I've left the book, I'm feeling like things are gonna really go wrong, especially because Stevie has been carrying around and then there were none by Agatha Christie. And in, and then there were none, tongue twister, everybody dies. Like everybody on this remote island dies. And I feel like this kind of making me feel a bit like that because I mean, I haven't actually read that book, but I know of the plot. This feels like that because we're in a secluded school, it's up in the mountains, there is a snowstorm happening, no one can get in, no one can get out. So they are all on their own, they are cut off. And I really feel like people are gonna start dropping down dead. But also if they don't, I'm gonna be so disappointed. And though that's a bad thing to say because you don't want people to die, but I really will be disappointed, especially because there is Stevie carrying around and then there were none and all those references back to that book. So we'll see. We'll see. I am, I'm really hoping that this last chunk of the book, people are going to start dying because it will just, 
it would be good or at least one person like one person has to die that will make it like worth it for all those little things back to Agatha Christie's book we'll see we'll see anyway that was a bit morbid of me we do have some book mail and I'm very excited with this one so I recently watched on Carly's who I'll have her linked below her recent video and she was talking about The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald and how is it really by F. Scott Fitzgerald like she kept saying by Zelda Fitzgerald which is his wife and I was like that's really unusual but then she did say I have a whole video on this if you need to know more so I did I looked at that video and wow like I didn't realize that I studied The Great Gatsby at college GCSE college college maybe one of them and I did not hear a word of that at all and that's the sort of like thing that we should be learning about in my opinion like if you're going to learn about the author's book you should also learn about how it was created and so I got myself second hand which world of books is amazing for by the way world of books is a great place to go for some second hand books that are really good price and just things that you might not be able to pick up anywhere else um and it's actually in pretty good condition really uh, but I got myself Zelda by Nancy Milford and this is the story of Scott and Zelda Fitzgerald. I'm excited for it, like this is literally all about the life of Zelda, how she ended up married to F. Scott Fitzgerald, Jazz Age, how they did everything but then how Zelda traces the inner disintegration of the gifted despairing woman torn by the clash between her husband's career and her own talent because it has been argued that F. Scott Fitzgerald actually plagiarised Zelda and her diaries and that that's why his books did so well because he took portions of her diaries, her writing, her own words and turned them into books and then when Zelda was like no this isn't right and stuff had her put in a mental institute like what? So I was instantly intrigued so I decided to go with this non-fiction book all about Zelda and her life and everything that actually happened so I'm just in a non-fiction era at the minute I'm really intrigued I've now got this one and one more on my TBR so yeah it just this sort of thing it sounded so so good and I was just like I, I need to read this I want to read this like what is going on especially because back then men did have so much more control over women and what they did with them and so putting her in a mental institute and claiming that you know she was way too stressed out it's heartbreaking to think about did not know that about F Scott Fitzgerald and that whole debacle between him and his wife and so I'm excited to actually learn a little bit more so let me know if you guys knew that about F Scott Fitzgerald and the Great Gatsby and everything apparently it's not just the Great Gatsby it is his other books as well so that's is intriguing I want to learn more and so it would be good to learn more about his wife and the person that he apparently plagiarized so yeah there we go and that's it I have sought out a DVD that my brother bought because I've given him the wrong disc in the actual DVD I'm also thinking to actually just go to a coffee shop and read some more of the hand on the wall because I'm really intrigued as I said I think everything's about to start going wrong please oh oh almost lost my bookmark um but yeah so hoping to do that gonna sit down there and then I'm also thinking to pick up the last of the frames for my wall or well hoping to pick them up and then maybe tomorrow we can actually start sorting out that wall because I said I was gonna do this weeks and weeks ago and as usual it's taken me forever so I would love to just get started on that wall okay right well I think that's all the updates done so let's go to a coffee shop oh and did you like my egg mayonnaise I was really impressed with myself I've been Andrea making egg mayonnaise so I did it the first time and I didn't film it because I was like I don't know how this is gonna go but it worked the first time so then obviously you guys got to see me making it again I really need to get a stand for my phone or something because trying to cook and do all this one it just doesn't work um, but it was rather tasty I'm rather pleased with that anyway right let's go
died. Okay, well, one person died, but it wasn't anyone from our actual group of kids, because they are basically kids, they're all in school. I think the problem is, is I built this up in my head a lot. The dog's having fun. Um, but I did. I built this up in my head a lot because of all the references to and then there were none. And so I was really expecting this kind of explosive finish. And in all honesty, this book was more just wrapping up the first two, like wrapping up everything that has been happening in the past in the 1930s and what had been going on in present day and finalising the fact of who was actually behind it both then and now and just what happened to Alice Ellenham and all of that so it was it was okay I think I would have enjoyed it and it would have been exactly what I wanted if it wasn't for the fact that I really built it up because there were so many hints towards and then there were none and I just feel like it was a bit of a red heron and it ended up not being that explosive finale of people dying left right and centre and stuff and even the person that died like it wasn't it wasn't anything where I'm like oh that's a mystery around that like you you know exactly why they've done it and it's just like oh so yeah so from that perspective disappointed overall it was a nice way to wrap up the trilogy the first two books and everything that happened it definitely wasn't as like fast paced or things happening as the first two but it did wrap up quite well and it had a good atmosphere and everything that was going on with the snowstorm so I do think it still worked it just yeah like I said I, I, I built it up and that's not the book's fault like I did that uh, but I did still enjoy it and it was exactly what I wanted but before I got around to finishing that one oh well, my bookmark just fell out but it's fine I did read the 12th book in The Return of Sherlock Holmes, which is The Abbey Grange, and this one was more about how Sherlock Holmes is thinking more outside of the law now, how when he finds out certain things, he may not always give the police all the information to catch their killer. He gives them a prompt, but he doesn't actually hand it to them like he has in the other stories and it's interesting to see that character development with Sherlock Holmes especially because at the beginning he would not have done this sort of thing so that was very interesting um, and it means I'm on the last one which is the second stain and then this short story collection is done. I've been enjoying it reading it one short story every day as I've said every time I actually pick this up and I read it for a few days in a row so yeah, very happy with that. Honestly, it's been a good good murder mystery start of the week. We are on Wednesday. On it, The only problem with doing nights is I can never work out what day I'm actually on. But yeah, we're on Wednesday. And we've got two days technically because the 1st of July is on a Friday. So I am going to dedicate two days to giving the bees another try. I mentioned already earlier in this vlog um, what this one is about and why I put it down but I do want to give it another try. So I'm going to do that and hopefully I like it. If it gets to the point where I've read another 100 pages and I'm just not gelling with this, then I will DNF, but I feel like I should give it a try because I do keep thinking about it because it is interesting and it's not a perspective I've ever read anything from. So I really want to like this. So I think we'll give that one a try and bring that one to work. And then as for the rest of the week, read and wise, I've just got the last short story in The Great God Pan to read, which will probably be read on Thursday. So that's all done. And then, oh, I do still have Tokyo Ghoul, but because I've got Tokyo Ghoul to read in July as well, I might just carry that one over into July and just read five and six in July. So it would just be a catch up one. So yes, yeah, so that's the plan. I'm also thinking, depending on how this goes, if it is ending up as a DNF, I probably will cut the vlog short, maybe on the Friday, the 1st of July, so that I can start July's TBR then. But yeah, we'll see. Nothing's actually set in stone. Instead, what is set in stone is that I am going to be sorting out that art print wall because we actually have the majority of the frames and now I did get the last of the frames that I was hoping to get yesterday although some of them I painted because I wasn't a fan of the original colour but it was the right size that I wanted so I spent yesterday just painting these two after I'd got back from the local town where I had obviously the coffee and everything which was lovely and then repotted my plant and everything so and then spent 
the rest of my evening before work just sorting these out. I just decided to go with like a light blue colour just to have two frames that are different to the pink and whites that I've gone for. Just have a bit of a contrast, see how I like it. So that's what we're going to be doing today but first of all I need food and then we're going to chuck some YouTube on and just focus on sorting that wall out. That is the plan today and if we get that all done I'm going to be very very happy. crazy crazy couple days well actually I can't even say a couple days literally just yesterday I never got to work yesterday my brother ended up in hospital he's okay now but he had dislocated his knee to the point where literally it was on the other side of his leg and it was just it was gross it was a moment I'd been out with my partner and I got home and I was literally planning to nap and then do myself some dinner and go to work and instead all of that happened and oh, thankfully he's okay and he's absolutely fine now he's got his leg in a brace and some crutches and everything but wow it, it took hours and hours at the hospital even just getting him there it was just such a stressful time <laughs> just I'm tired even now and he's doing so well he's so brave but yeah so yesterday I barely read anything um but where did I even leave you what day are we on we're on Friday so I left you Wednesday um oh as you saw all my f pictures are now in frames and I'm so so happy with them they look absolutely amazing and that day I I did try and read a bit of the bees but I'll be honest I managed about 10 pages and it just wasn't gelling with the writing style and I decided you know what let me just flick through this and see does this get better is this something that I can get into later because I know there's going to be a payoff but I just wasn't finding anything in this um so yeah it's a DNF I just is annoying because I think the premise works really well but I just am not getting on with it so yeah this one is a no but I might see if my sister wants this one um obviously I've got two sisters one of them was really intrigued by this so I might see if she'd like to try it if she likes it she can keep it sort of thing so I did try that ended up being a DNF um so I then went back to my trusty Sherlock Holmes collection and finished this off the last one I have to admit was a bit anticlimactic but the collection as a whole I really enjoyed as I said this was my favorite it has remained that way and I just I'm really in love with it I thought it was so much fun and I just loved seeing the development Sherlock has where he ends up at that point of instead of being a straight narrow following everything black and white person he starts to understand that there are some morally grey things that happen and sometimes we do need to take that into account and I just thought it was really good really good progression on his part and everything and looking forward to the next one it's not a short story collection it is just a short story I said a bit confused about when I should have read that one because even in this the last short story was saying how it was the last one that Dr Watson actually wrote so not sure but I guess we'll find out and then I had no idea what to read I was just no idea because obviously I'd put the bees down I wasn't feeling it I didn't want to start my July TBR yet and I also didn't really want to end this vlog yet so I was just like I, I want to find a book to read for myself and also I do want to carry on with this vlog so I ended up watching Emmy's channel so I'll have her linked below she did a recent video of a book tour and it was great loved that video love her channel so much right towards the end of her bookshelf tour she was getting to her Sarah J Marks she's literally got two of them part of the Throne of Glass series and she was saying how she doesn't know whether she wants to continue or not that she's not sure about it and it just got me thinking about how much I like Sarah J Mars about the fact that I understand everyone's criticism of her books but I read Sarah J Mars ages ago like I read 
it when the first three Throne of Grass were out and then after that I was waiting for each one to come out and I think because of that nostalgia that I have for the writing I just see them as comfort books and they're not the best they have their problems but she is just that comforting author to me and so when I was thinking about it I was like I know what I'm gonna read and that's A Court Silver Flames. <laughs> This will be the third time that I'm reading this book but the first time in paperback because I did have the hardback but I gave that to my sister and I got the paperback and I'm so excited. I didn't read any of this yesterday, I was hoping that I would have this finished by Sunday really but I don't know if that's going to happen because we're only on page 95 out of 750 <laughs> so I don't know if that's going to happen but I am loving it and I am actually annotating this one so I've only underlined things because I'm thinking I'm going to try putting post-it notes in it because there's not a lot of room to actually write any notes so I'm going to try and put post-it notes in it. I've seen other people do annotating that way and it seems really interesting so We'll try it, see how I think. So I was gonna go back and go through this bit and put post-it notes in it, but we'll see because I do actually need to try and finish this because I'd love to start my July 2BR on Monday, a few days into July, but I just feel like it'd be really nice to start a fresh vlog with my July 2BR. So yeah, at the minute I'm loving this reread. I never know whether I should explain what this is about because it is such a popular thing, but basically, this is the fourth book in a series. The first book is A Court of Thorns and Roses and it's basically a beauty and beast retelling. It's not my favourite book at all but the second one, A Court of Mist and Fury, kind of spins everything on its head and is a lot more engrossing. This one we're following the main character from that series, Feyre. We're following her sister, Nesta. Now Feyre was okay but I never really liked her as a main character. I much prefer Nesta. Now that's can be a bit of an unusual opinion. A lot of people don't like Nesta and I can understand why because she is just this character that is full of rage and resentment and she does things that isn't very nice and I, I can fully understand it but also I think if you've been through something like that then you can understand why she's so full of anger and resentment and I just I like her, I really connect with her, I really like this story, this is my favourite out of the series so far but in this one it is all about fey creatures so we have it the map basically looks like england and the very very bottom of england is kind of sliced off for human lands and then the rest of it is split between the fey into different like autumn summer winter etc courts and we're in the night court at the very very top so basically like scotland i guess and we're following that and nesta herself is someone that was human but due to the events in the first three books has been transformed into fey and again there's so much anger about that because her body's no longer hers anymore like it's been changed against her will there is so much that she's going through and in this book they kind of force her to start dealing with this, to start getting over it, to go into training, to try and do this and I understand where they're coming from because it is a place of care but the way they go about it is absolutely the wrong way in my opinion and it just strips Nesta of all of her own choices which she hasn't had many anyway and so I, I've, I feel I understand where they were coming from, I just don't agree with the way they did it. And so that's another reason why Nesta is again so full of anger and everything because every choice that she's tried to make for herself has just been taken away from her. But again, they, they did do it out of position from like love because the choices that she was making was self-destructive, so. But yeah, I do love this one and it really is just a focus on PTSD, going through everything, how difficult it can be. And I like the fact that we do spend that time with her. But this is really good, I really enjoy it and it is that fantasy book but it's like I said Sarah Jamars is just that comfort for me and it's not the best in the world but it is comforting for me because I've grown up, grown up with it for such a long time. Anyway <laughs> let's move on from that because I will talk for ages. I did actually finish my short story collection The Great God Pan by Arthur Machin as well. The last one was The White People and this one is all about these two men who are talking over what sin really is and how social sin and spiritual sin are two very different things and for one gentleman to support his argument he gives the other gentleman this like little green book which is basically like a diary and in it this girl was detailing different things that are happening to her which is basically like initiation into the occult and 
honestly, I have to admit, the stories about her, the stories that her nurse had told her about things, just felt like Grimm's fairy tales. Like, they were really dark and twisted fairy tales. And so I liked it for that. I can still say that The Great God Pan, so the first short story in this, is actually my favourite. I think it's got the best atmosphere. But for that last story, I thought it worked really nicely as well. And so that's what I managed to read yesterday once I got back home because I needed to like calm down. <laughs> but yeah, so I think the rest of this weekly vlog, we're just going to be focusing on this tome. I'm not going to update every single day just because it is a reread. It's one that I know I'm going to enjoy and I don't think you guys need me coming on here every day going, I read some more and I really enjoyed it because that's literally all I'll be saying. Instead, we're just going to hopefully get this finished so that I can start my TBR on Monday. But with everything that happened yesterday, I don't know if that's going to happen because I worked out I had to read 160 pages a day. I now have to try and fit the 160 pages that I missed into another three days. Maybe doable because I don't have the short stories anymore and I was reading one of those each day. But we'll see. I think it's going to be a bit of a push. That's, that's where we're at. That's what we've done. And I'm rather tired, but I do have my wrap up to film. So I'm going to do that in a second. And yeah, I'll probably, honestly, next catch up with you maybe Sunday. And we'll see how much I actually got through this. Okay, I'm going to go. I've been chatting for a while. So let's go. Technically, I've actually finished it on Sunday, 15 minutes before midnight. I think I did pretty well. I really did enjoy this. I didn't end up with the post-it notes in this as I wanted, but that's fine. I can save that for another reread another time because we all know I'm going to reread this. I really did enjoy this. I also had a lot of fun going back through and connecting the dots between things that are happening in Crescent City and different things that have been mentioned and if you know you know and if you don't then you should read the books to know but that's all I'm gonna say but I did I question marked a lot of things where I think oh actually maybe that's a little bit of a little breadcrumb trail that Sarah Jamal's has been planting and um yeah I, I did enjoy this one. I thought it was really good. I liked making those connections. I'm really pleased I did reread it after reading Crescent City, the second one. So yeah, that was that was great. And I'm not actually going to go too much more into depth with this because I have reread this. This will be the three times now. And um, it's just, it's good. I like Sarah Dumas. All the things that I've already said and I feel like repeat myself is a bit pointless. So yeah, I just... I enjoyed it. I'm so pleased with it. I'm also really pleased that I did actually manage to finish this, mainly because yesterday I finished work in the morning and I just went to my partner's house, snapped for a few hours, and then we just chilled. It was so nice just to relax, not do anything, and just, yeah, spend the day relaxing with one another. So he did a bit of gaming, I did a bit of reading. It was just great. It was great. I really enjoyed it. It was exactly what was needed, especially after working seven nights straight. And then I actually do have work today in the afternoon. So it was just nice to have a few hours where we just did nothing and could just rest and relax and recover and just enjoy it. So yeah, so I do have work this afternoon, so I can't be rambling too much. And um, yeah, this was, this was great. I'm now obviously late to start in my July TBR. I don't even know what I'm going to read next, so I guess you're going to find out in next week's vlog, which I'm actually going to be starting about two minutes after finishing this one, and I still don't know what I'm going to be reading. So the first part of that vlog is going to be me going, I don't know what to read, but I do want to start it today. So that's that's what's going to be happening. And um, yeah, that's, that's everything. I think we did really good, to be honest, finishing up both of the short story collections and also getting in two extra books that just weren't on my TBR but were just really really enjoyable and I think that's kind of just what I'm feeling at the minute. I'm feeling very like mood ready which isn't great considering I do have a set TBR to get through but we'll see. We'll see. As said, you're going to find out next week with that one. But yeah, okay, I'm I'm literally in just ramble territory. If you haven't read Sarah Jo Mars' books, um, it's a bit of an awkward one of where you would start. You definitely don't start with Crescent City, or you could with number one, but then you can't read number two until you've read A Court of Thorns and Roses series. 
but do stick with it because the first book is, is isn't the best it's not the best but the rest of the books makes it worth it like 100 percent. so yeah I would say that or if you want to start at the beginning and you do like YA then Throne of Glass is good but again there's two sets of people the people that really like the first three books in the series but then don't quite enjoy the rest of the books or like myself where I'm like you know what the first three books are fine they are your tropey young adult fantasy books but then after that it just progresses it's good it's great and um I love Sarah Dormas clearly and I know it's not for everyone and that's absolutely fine if it's not for you but it is for me and I am good with that and I just I love to see Nesta's progress with this as I said her dealing with everything going through such a hard time but not just Nesta you see all these other women within this story that have also gone through this really hard time and how they kind of make that friendship and get through it together and it's just it's good it's it's one of those books where I could say out of everything the plot in this one isn't the main focus it is about Nesta going through it and reaching the other end and I just I liked it I liked it a lot and I said I wasn't gonna ramble about it but here I am so we're gonna go so thank you so much for watching if you made it this far then let's put a mask because there is a mask on the cover of this and um yeah I think I think we'll leave it there so once again thank you and let me know what you have all been reading don't forget to leave the mask emoji and if you have enjoyed this don't forget to give it that thumbs up subscribe comment to let me know that you're here social media links will be linked below and i will of course catch you in the next one